in this video tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to read price bars. It's very simplistic, not complicated at all. We just have to pay attention to what the price bar is telling us. Now, I use candlesticks, and I use candlesticks because they're easy to read. You know, it's either red, green, or it's a doji. Now, on a candlestick, the color portion of the candlestick is called the body. The top line is the wick as well as the bottom. So you have the wick that identifies the low, a wick that identifies the high. If it is a green candlestick, that tells me that the open was down at the bottom of the body, the close is at the top of the body. The extreme opposite on a bearish candlestick, the open will be at the top, the close will be at the bottom. So I know just from looking at this candlestick that price opened here, closed here, and in between that made a high here and made a low here. Now an easy way to remember bullish and bearish, green is always bullish and that is because bulls ram their heads up into their prey. Bearish, bears always come down onto their prey. An easy way to remember it is that bulls are always going up, bears are always coming down. Then you have the doji, and on the doji, of course, you have your open, your close, and they're equal or just about equal. And then, of course, you have your high and your low. Now, a three bar reversal down indicates that the next bar should be down. If the bar closes below the low of the middle bar, then that is a stronger three bar reversal. It's actually called a three bar pivot, okay? Or a pivot high. In other words, this bar made a high. This one was lower, but it also closed below the low of the previous candle. And that's really important to understand where that close was because it could be the difference between a really good trade and not so good trade. So the low on this one was here. You can clearly see that the close of the third bar was below it. So this is bar one, this is bar two, this is bar three. And this is why it's called a three bar reversal, okay? It's to the downside because the third bar closed below the low of the middle bar, or bar two. Notice that bar two will always be higher than bar one. Some people call this a one, two, three, okay? Same thing, it's a three bar reversal down. Now on this next one, you also see this is bar one, bar two, bar three, okay? And you can see that bar two is higher than bar one, and bar three closes below the low of bar two. It's exactly what you want to see. That tells me that the next bar should be lower than this line. Here, same thing. The next bar should be lower than this one. On this one, you have exactly the same thing. You have bar one, bar two, bar three. The difference is that bar three is not closing below bar two. So although you would expect the next bar to be lower, don't be surprised if it's not, because sometimes these will continue depending on whether the, the volume is greater to the upside or downside. You also have a three bar reversal up and it indicates that the next bar should be up. In this one, you have bar one, bar two, and bar three. And you can see that each one of these was a bullish candlestick. And in this case, bar three closes up above the high of bar two. Now, the way that I trade, a lot of times I will enter on that bar, already anticipating 
that bar three will come in, okay? So you have bar two is lower than bar three. Bar three is higher than the low of bar two, but also closes above the high of bar two. That's what truly makes it a three bar reversal up. On this one, exactly the same thing. You have bar one, bar two, bar three. And as you can see, bar two is lower than bar one in bar three. You can also see if you draw a line off of that middle candlestick, bar three closes above the height of bar two. That tells me that the next bar should actually take out the height. The next bar should take out the height of bar three. Now, in this case, you've got bar one, bar two, and bar three. Bar two is lower than bar one and bar three. Draw a line off of it and it might have closed one tick above or right at the high of bar two. This one, not as strong as this one and this one, but you can still anticipate that the next bar will take out this high. We also have what is called a two bar reversal up and that immediately identifies that the next bar should be an up bar. In other words, it will take out the high of bar two. So here we have bar one, here we have bar two. Now, it's very important to notice the differences in this. Bar two is lower than bar one. What is important is as it made that low, buyers stepped in and they pushed price all the way up to the top of the bar. That tells me that the next bar should be an up bar, okay? You have your wick and you'll have your wick on the high. In this scenario, and this is probably a market report um, judging by this bar, you have bar one, then you have bar two. Bar two is lower than bar one. And you can see they made this low and then buyer stepped in and pushed this all the way up to the top of the bar. So when you see this, you know that more than likely the next bar is going to be up. Okay, that's what you anticipate. This is typically a reversal point within a trend. It could be indicating a pullback or it could be indicating a full reversal in the market, just depending on where it comes and when it comes. In addition to the two bar reversal up, you have a two bar reversal down. And you can see in this case, this is bar one, this is bar two. And it's pretty much the same, except this bar is higher than the previous bar. And that's what makes it the two bar reversal down. So if you connect the highs, you can see they're going up. But as that high was made here, sellers came in and they took it straight back down, closed on the low. That means that the next bar should be lower, okay? And it will typically be a red bar in here, but this bar tells you what the next bar is going to do. Um, in this case, you have the same thing. This is bar one, this is bar two. So in this case, you don't have a wick because it closed on the high. And if you connected these, they're going up. But as this high was made, again, you see sellers step in and take control of the bar. In addition to the other bars that we've discussed already, we also have what's called an engulfing bar. And that means that the current bar has engulfed the previous bar. What do we mean by that? Well, if you take the high of the previous bar and then you take the low of the previous bar, you can see that bar two engulfs literally the entire bar. So you have a high, you have a low, this one, 
does the extreme in those higher and lower. Now in this case, I know that the next bar should be a down bar because it closed on the low. And notice also, this is sort of like a um, two bar reversal, but this bar will always close at the extreme and you'll have both a high extreme and a low extreme. Now, in this case, we have bar one and bar two. The next bar should be up. If we draw the high and we draw the low, you can see that this bar exceeds both the high and the low of the previous bar. Why should the next bar be up? It's because this closed on the high. So this tells us we should have another up bar. In this case, we should have another down bar. And of course, this would be filled with red. And this is a doji bar. Now, dojis a lot of times get a bum rap because people say a doji bar, oh, it's a reversal bar, I gotta go in. Depends on where it is. Now, in this case, we see that the next bar should be down. Why? Because this one made a high and then it closed at the bottom, okay? This could have been just a, a single line there. It still would have indicated the same thing. More than likely, your next bar is going to be a down bar. This is typically, uh, and again, it depends on the market and how the market is moving but a lot of times this is actually telling you that a market reversal on that time frame is happening. But it also could be that they're going to just simply pull back. For example, this is a pretty wide bar here. So I would anticipate price to come at least 50% of that, which will probably be about here, okay? And that's just because the wider the bar is, the more retracement you're going to get. In this case, you're going to get about a 50% from it. The same thing on the red candlestick. You can see that you have a high here, a low here. Then the next bar forms a low. So you have bar one, you have bar two. The open is equal to the close pretty much. It might have been one tick off. So more than likely, your next bar is going to be an up bar and that would be filled with green and again you can see that this is a wide bar so if i'm anticipating okay where would this go it'll probably be the 50 percent mark okay in this part of the presentation um i'm actually going to show you some screen captures that i did and you have to consider the time frame okay um, in this one, the time frame is five minutes. And personally, I do not like trading a five minute chart. I think it's too noisy. And as we progress and you see I'm increasing time, you can go back and say, wow, you know, there's a lot of difference on accuracy because the five minute time frame, when you get a reversal bar, it may play out, but it may only play out for one small bar. So I generally focus on 15 minutes and above, okay? And I'm not going to go through all of these. Um, I'm just going to identify, you know, bars that you should look for, okay? So here, you have a reversal bar to the upside. Now you can barely see it, but this is a red bar. This makes a new low and it closes on the high. This is the one that, I mean, I actually go in on this bar, okay? Um, now this is what some people call a pin bar. Now we do have hindsight because we're seeing everything that happened afterwards. And normally a lot of people would actually go short off of that. Um, and I have a volume indicator that tells me who controlled the bar. So I may or may not have gone in on that particular bar. Now we do see a doji here, and this is sort of what I'm talking about on a five minute bar. So this is a doji saying it's either going to be a market reversal or a pullback. 
In this case, it just happens to be a pullback. We get a no, new low right here. So we went from this low down to this low. It did what we anticipated. It's just you're not going to get very much because it's um, in a chart. Um, uh, this is a pin bar or a reversal bar that actually worked out. So it comes up, it makes a high, and then it closes on the low, or towards the low is a better description. So, you know, this is one that I tend to go short off of. And then here, we, you see we have a reversal bar to the upside. It comes way down to here, and then they push it straight back up, okay? That's just telling me that the next bar is at least going to make a new high. And when this doji here forms, you see that the open is equal to the close. It goes up, it pulls back and closes uh, in the upper percentile. This tells me it's probably a market reversal, not just a pullback because it's a higher low, okay? Here you have a doji. Okay, and you know, close is equal to the open. And in this case, the next bar closes below that low. Well, that tells me that we're going to make a new low, which occurs here. So this is a doji that tells me, okay, we could see a market reversal. In actuality, it was just a pullback in the uptrend. And again, if you connect these lows here, you can see that it's going up. Then it makes a lower high here. And it may make you think, oh, it's reversing to the downside. It is this bar here, followed by this bar that says no way. Okay. And again, it's because the lows are higher lows. Then we have an isolated high here. And this is a three bar reversal to the downside, but it's not a strong one because this bar was not able to close below the low. It actually took an additional fourth bar, okay? Um, and this is on a five minute. So like I said, I'm not putting a lot of faith in the five minute because I already know it's very, very noisy. Okay, now this is a 15 minute chart and you're going to see it's not quite as noisy as the five minute. Okay, in this case, we have a reversal bar here and it goes down, it forms a low and then it continues up. Uh, we have another reversal bar here and this one actually made a new high, closed below the low of the previous bar. Usually that tells me the next bar will be down. Of course it was, and then they took it and closed it on the high. This bar actually formed the pivot bar where it said, okay, we made a low, and then we made a higher low, and it closed above the high of the previous bar. Now, um, on this one, that one actually formed a high, and then the very next bar forms a reversal bar to the downside. So you're expecting a new low. On this bar, you actually also get a reversal bar because it closes down. You can see the red there, and it's actually telling you the next bar should be down. Not only is it down, but it actually closes below the low here. And of course the market starts down off of that. But this also shows you this entire area shows you, um, and it takes you a while to get to, to actually be able to recognize this. And it's more or less a congestion area. It's where they have made a high after this big run up. They make a high and it's slowing down, okay? And what the market does during this period 
is normally they will come back and retest that high. You can see on this that it's not a lot of room on that new high. And then over here, you make a high, but it's slightly lower, okay? And then they come back to almost test that area. That's the way support and resistance works. So when you, you're looking at it, you can tell they're getting weaker. And this is the key point in trading. It's also what makes trading so difficult because you see a lot of pictures. This is okay. You know, you're making higher highs. You know, you're in an uptrend. And what we often don't realize is the market really doesn't move like that, okay? Um, typically, what will happen is you might go up and then you'll come back down and you might bounce around a little bit and then you go back up and then you kind of bounce around and then you go back up and kind of bounces around and then it might go back up a little bit and then it kind of bounces around and it comes back to almost test it and then it kind of bounces around, comes down a little bit, comes back to test it. This is a market turning pattern, okay? Um, some people would say it's a head and shoulders you know, it's all kinds of different names for these patterns that we have in trading. But generally, you can tell, you know, just from looking at this, you're not making real strong highs. It's not like, bam, high, bam, high. No, it's more like, uh, maybe, uh, maybe not. And then they'll come back and test it again. So, and that's exactly what they were doing here. So, this one actually says, because you've made one lower high, now you've made two lower highs, they could not get back to this line. You know, more than likely they're going to come down. And that's exactly what they did. Now this one is a uh, isolated low because it's lower than the previous bar and it's lower than this bar. It is not a strong pivot low because this bar did not close above that high. Okay, all they were doing was coming down to make this lower high here. This one, on the other hand, is a double top that they're equal, okay? But this bar actually closes below the low of that bar. That's a very strong signal to the downside. And this is the bar that I like to trade when you're in a downtrend. So you come down, you make a low, you come back up, make a high, but then that bar closes on the low. And if you can, you know, if I erased all these lines, it actually closed below the low of that bar. You know, these are the ones I like to enter on because more likely than not, you're going to continue down. And of course, in this case, it did. Okay, now this one is a 30 minute bar and it's on the USD yen pair. Okay, I wanted to point that out because I'm going to expand the bar so you can see them better. And you know, what you kind of notice on this one is you don't have as much noise as you did on the five and not as much as you had on the 15. Of course, the 15 was not as noisy as the five minute. And I like to see that. Uh, I like to see clean charts, not, you know, a lot of noisy charts. I just don't like noise. No trader does really. <clears throat> but you can also see how much cleaner the reversal bars are as well. You know, we have a three bar reversal here. This is bar one, bar two, bar three. Okay. Bar two is lower than bar one in bar three, and bar three is strong because it closes above the high of bar two. So that tells you, hey, you're probably going to be going up. Um, then you have this bar, and this looks like a reversal pin bar where it goes up, it makes a high, and then it closes down on the low. And again, this is why I tell you, I like to see the next bar go down. The next bar actually closes above the high. Then we have an isolated high that forms a three bar reversal. So you get bar one, bar two, bar three. 
and again this is one that's not going to be a strong one because it does not come down and close below this line which is the low of bar two so you know it's kind of iffy it may or may not um this is the one that i was talking about the doji it's not in the right place okay it doesn't mean oh it's going to be a market reversal this doji should have been up here okay and it should have pretty much looked like that or you know even closing in the middle would have been okay i would have preferred it down so this doji you would not pay attention to at all let's put these bars in the context when would i use it okay first you know you have a reversal bar here okay it comes down it makes a low and it closes in the upper percentile of the bar then we get this bar which is an isolated high and it forms a three bar reversal to the downside typically these are the bars that i'm looking for to go short okay number one is going to form a lower high you see the weakness right here in other words they came up and they made a high and then they closed in the middle okay and because they closed in the middle this is considered weak okay and that would to me would say hmm, I might want to take that short okay this bar confirms it so by the time it gets to this line right here you've got a 50 well in this case it's going to be 45 showing here okay just as it is um, and then on this side of course it would be showing 55 so you're getting this right at uh, 50 55 dollars of risk okay um, then it comes down and it makes a low stays below goes up closes down closes up this one um, looks like it is a reversal bar to the upside very strong bar to the upside okay uh, in that they made a low and closed on the very high okay uh, the next bar goes a little bit higher a little bit higher but it closes on the low okay and closes below the low of that bar okay so again down it comes this i think would have been a daily for me but again you're anticipating it to come down um and that's exactly what it does you make a low and this one closes up but i prefer to see it close up here then you get a stronger bar because that made a low though the next bar closes above the high of that then you would anticipate new highs again this one does the same thing you know um, it goes up closes on the high this bar makes a new high and then forms a reversal bar to the downside so they go straight up and then straight back down to close on the low okay and that's pretty much what you want to see uh, the next bar does go lower and then you just get you know a couple of bars that you've got in slightly higher low there nothing major and then they come back to test this original high here they may have even went a little bit higher okay the key bar is this one so you've got one two three third bar closes underneath the low of the previous bar so of course price continues down this is the doji that you want to look for that says hey the market's probably going to at least pull back maybe a little bit more might do a market reversal this doji is in the right place see how you made that low and the next bar confirms it because it closes above the height of this bar okay and we go up 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 then we have this reversal bar you see this is the key to reversal bars it doesn't mean that the market is necessarily reversing 
it means that for a short period of time, the market is going to go in the opposite direction. That could be one bar, it could be 10 bars. You know, that much it doesn't predict, okay? So then we make a low here, comes back and forms a lower high here. Even though it forms the lower low here, this bar says, okay, it's probably going to go up and then eventually does. Okay, now this is the 15 minute Wall Street 30, uh, which equates to the Dow Jones actually. And you'll notice that it's just a really nice clean chart and it is. And you know, um, I love trading clean charts and this is extremely clean. So um, using exactly the same concept of reversal bars, you can see you had a reversal bar here. You had a reversal bar here. And even though this closed at the top, um, if you had went in there, then I would have said, you know, if you had went long off of this and this bar came in, I probably would have been out, okay? Then this is the reversal bar that you actually wanted, okay? This bar makes a low, this bar closes above the high of that one, but you also see it's um, bullish, 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 but now this bar you are getting some weakness on. This one comes down, makes a low, uh, closes on the high, but does not go higher than this. And then the next bar just goes straight down. That's actually the market opening. So you can see this is just a really, really clean chart. And let's just take it from here and we go you know, down to here, up to here, back down, and then we get this nice little pullback and then a new low. So you've got the low, high, low, high, low formations there. Um, but all in all, it's a really nice price bar chart. I love to see it when you get red, 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 and then green, green, green. Um, this is telling me that the market is absolutely trending. And I'm also a big support and resistance trader. I love trading support and resistance. You know, I have my own support and resistance indicators, but for those that just use the Nadex charts, just throw you some pivot lines on there. Uh, it's actually under technical and it has pivot lines. Just throw them on there. This is a one hour chart. And um, I have my own RSI, so I don't necessarily use this one. But again, I'm just trying to show you the different price patterns. In this case, you can see the S1 is support one. This is pivot. This is resistance one, resistance two, resistance three. And each one of these are separated as dailies. So I just want to kind of show you what I look at. At because for me it's not just the price bar formation it's also where the price bar formation occurs um, just right off the bat this is a great bar well this one is too because it's a topping formation you have a higher high and it closes on the bottom and if I put my volume indicator on that it would probably show me volume divergence, which means that as price was going up, the volume was going down. That's another video. Um, but anyway, this comes down. It breaks the pivot line. Now, it breaks the pivot line here, but then it comes back, and this is often the case, it comes back to test it. In, I mean, that is a total rejection of the pivot. In other words, they close below it, and when they break a support or resistance line, they typically will always go back and test to ensure that it forms a resistance area. And in this case, that's exactly what happens. They take it back up above and say, okay, are you going to resist me 
And the answer was most definitely, okay? So this has turned from a support line into a resistance line. Again, they approach the S1, you see that right here. On this bar, they approached it. Initially, they did not close below it, okay? So initially, it was like, hmm, I might act as support for this. But then you get this bar here, and this is an interesting bar to me because they make a high, and then it, again, it closes on the low. Uh, if you compare this bar to this bar, you can see, you know, they're very similar. The next bar confirms it. In other words, this is a three bar reversal, okay? And it is confirmed because this bar closes below that low. Now, there are some people that will wait until that bar, that third bar forms. I'm not one of those people. I like to actually take it a little bit earlier because, you know, here, you would get it for cheaper risk versus here you're going to get it for probably $70 a risk versus probably $40 a risk. Okay, that's the difference. Then it does come down and this is why I like using the pivot lines on a daily because you can see the pivot lines here from the previous day, from the previous day, from the previous day. But, and it's very substantial because if I extended this pivot line out, you can see that they bounced off of it right here. So you had a reversal bar down, followed by a reversal bar up. That told me they would probably go back up and at least test this support one area from the previous day. Now you wouldn't call that a support area in this case it would be an R1, which is a resistance line, but it's also based on the prior day pivot. And you'll see, they will test these areas all the time, okay? It's just the way they do it. You know, um, here, you might think they're testing the resistance line. To me, they're actually testing the pivot line because you see that they close above it. Remember, I told you they will come back and test it. That's exactly what that bar did. It came back to test, is this going to hold? And you can see they even did it again over here. That is usually the way support and resistance works. It is my firm opinion that the market moves um, in support and resistance. And I mean, if you watch that, you'll actually do very well in the market. You see here, this is the bar, the doji, that makes a difference and actually confirmed by the next bar that closes above it. You know, these are the areas that I really enjoy trading. That would have been a trade one day and again, extend this out into the next day. And you'll see that they went they tested it here, they came back, they tested it multiple times here. This is actually what we consider a congestion zone. And of course, then they moved up to the R2 level. So just different uh, ways to look at the market. Of course, my favorite is looking at the markets from a perspective of support and resistance using the price bars that I just talked about.